Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel. That channel is the Oceanus 48's world. And we're going to get right on into the Real Housewives of Atlanta with this Family Matters episode uh, 2, season 1. And it's called Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. First of all, I want to say, beautiful. Oh, can't even get the words out. Pitiful show, okay? And it just all has the drippings of someone who just wants to put themselves out there for money. And that's pretty much it. That's all we got here for Miss Portia. Trying to comfort the world. And it's sad to say, but it's so evident. Um, Portia is still in love with Dennis, and Dennis is still in love with Portia. The only thing is, Portia will sign that free month, okay? I think that is the only thing that is keeping them not being um, husband and wife and being a couple and just dealing with matrimony and the stuff that comes with it. Uh, if Dennis would have gave her that ring back, which I'm trying, I'm kind of confused. Uh, I thought that they were together. He had went somewhere when the uh, ladies had a couple strip on season 13, I think it was, and he had got her back. So how, from that point of time of reference, did she lose the ring and then wanted it back? It's, got, it's too much. And then they had PJ out there looking all kinds of crazy. Like, I don't, I didn't know if I wanted to whip up myself for um, basically interfering with the scenes that were being shown, or I need to whip up Dennis' ass and everybody that has her uh, being female. Because evidently she don't want to be female. And I don't know why Dennis and Portia put that little girl in a scene or scenes when it shows clearly that she don't want to be bothered with nobody. She want to take a rest, a nap, a snack. I don't know what it was, but it showed and had nothing about filming that she felt comfortable with doing. And I hate to see that when parents put their children into situations that gives the public a way to make their opinions because granted, we don't know what what kind of day PJ had. She was kind of messed up. She was just being uh, being called in. That's my picture. My pictures that went nowhere. I don't know what's going on with my pictures. But they went black for a minute. And I don't understand that part. But getting back, since it seemed like we got some pictures. And then we had uh, a few that didn't show. I don't know why. <sighs> okay, but anyway. Just going back, what we saw um, this particular season, this particular episode, getting back to Portia and Dennis and their child, uh, PJ. It was a scene where Dennis and his mom were out with PJ, and PJ was acting like Portia. Okay, when Portia don't get what she wants, she starts to act out. Granted. Don't know if baby girl had a nap, don't know if she was hungry, I just don't know if she was, you know, just fed up. Too fit to be tired and just wanted the cameras out of her face. She didn't want to be at that toy store or this, that, and the third. And Dennis called himself spending $479 or something to that degree on some toys. It seemed like they went to a boutique, okay? A boutique that specializes in children's toys, unique toys, I guess. And they just went ham. Been almost $500. I'm like, are y'all crazy? Y'all could have went out the wall. Hey, but hey, I can't tell a person how to spend their money because even we're really looking at me. And what? What? They grown, they do what they want to do with their money. Right, right, Bree. Check me, okay? But spend that kind of money. Mm -mm. No, ma'am, no son, no lord, okay? Put it on her education. I'll go get her more uh, bang for the book. And she donated her toys and she get been playing with them. But it seemed like what y'all had picked out for her, she wasn't carrying two shits of a shit's tail. Two shits of a shit's tail about those toys. Okay? And even Gina, um, the mama of Dennis, was saying, she wants you to pick her up. I'm like, damn, PJ too tall and too big. She's two years old. She don't need to be picked up. Okay? She need to, you know, be in a child's place. But since we was in a toy store, we were going out there paying up every kind of toy in that store that you needed or wanted or just wanted to see could it be something on a child's way of thinking and playing with it. Was the toy doable? I'm trying to get it. And she should have been having fun in there. What she was doing? 
Don't you question and watch who was here and why these films are rolling, the tapes are rolling, these people are looking up. She seemed like she was in a nap time. Or she could have been asleep, sleeping, tired. But she she knew she wasn't hearing it. So she was just really in that last nerve of mine. Because when I'm trying to listen to what a person's saying, and I got this little uh, little person in the background just being irritated, which is in this, irritating me, then I'm thinking about I got to get my hands to that backside. You know, you ain't saying where a child's place would be. And again, that's just me. That's me disciplining my children, whatever. Or oh, my child, when she was young, we, we didn't go there. We had a conversation even at one year old. We don't do this. We don't do this. We don't do this. If we do this, this is that and third. It's going to happen. Okay, do you understand me? Because I know you understand me. You know, that's a conversation me and my daughter had. She didn't do any of these things. She didn't have no friends. And when I went over the time that I had specified, we were going to be out. We are going to be doing this and third. If I went over, then she got time to, you know, act up, cut up, because it was my fault. You know what I'm saying? I had promised her one thing, we're going to do this, that, and the third. As long as she be a good girl, we'll do this, that, and the third. You know what I'm saying? And when protocols are not followed, actions happen, okay? So, to me, it seemed like the whole deal with PJ was just a bit much. And Portia is usually a good mother. She does well by her child. But now, since Simon's in the picture, she's trying to be a jet set babe. Uh, like my friend Sunday, Ottoman, uh, Ottoman, we just call her Sunday, okay, just two Sunday. Uh, she, she's getting on Portia too about being a jet set, jet set babe and not paying attention to her maternal duties and, you know, holding her family down and making sure the process goes through uh, co-parenting. And with Simon being in the midst of everything, it's kind of difficult for Jesus. Yes, because like I said, he has some unresolved issues about of course you could just go on and sign that prenup. It will make his mother happy because I'm sure she's part of that business that he does probably co own with her. Okay. And of course not here. Of course you want all the kit kaboo and everything. Like ain't nobody gonna uh, throw their money away because you fly you sometimes for to look. They say you got a man, uh you over there paying Simon's bills for some lady that he didn't buy a house from in Florida. I don't know if it was y'all house that y'all bought together or whatnot. I don't know. But if you sitting up there got to pay his bills and he ain't got the money to calm that situation down and make it go away. Girl, I'm looking for Gina and Dennis to take custody for PJ because by the time you keep fooling with Simon, you're going to run your own bank account in the ground and you ain't going to have anything for PJ to live off of until she can make up what she thinks she wants. Like, you're going to be plundering all of the money, okay? It's going to go down this deep hole that doesn't have a bottom line, and Simon's going to skip on to his tip, like, man, like he never knew you, okay? So I need you to pull up for a show. But anyway, that's how I had to get that out of the way. I'm not going to talk anymore about PJ and stuff of that nature, but PJ needs some mom back. Portia's fading quickly into that sunset, and we need to pull it back. So, send out prayers for Portia and her should be gathering. Because this woman right here that calls herself my mama ain't doing a very good job. Jen is doing what he can as being a father or dad to PJ. She loves him. You can see it on camera. Uh, but them two right there, the apple don't fall too far from the tree because it seems like grandmama got a big mouth on her. She don't know how to hold her tongue. Probably say hold a mule or whatever. Hold her mule. She needs to hold her mule. Because all this energy, all this actions that Diane mama was given and Diane's sister was given, they should have gave that same energy on season 12 and season 13 of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. And that's when it would have been good ass with time. Right now, to me, Dennis is coming off to be uh, true to who he is, you know, he is an a actual bachelor. He may have wanted for to do this, that, and the third, but since she ain't wanted to sign that prenup, he like, for what? I do what I want to do then. You ain't gonna act right. I'm still gonna see people come on my man. I need to get my rocks knocked off. If you ain't gonna do it, okay, behind the scenes, I might find somebody else with your fine self. That's how he like to play with Portia. And like I said, he ain't done with Portia. He just hate that Portia won't sign the prenup agreement so they can move happily on into that sunset. And he don't have to worry about Portia and her behavior going left on him. Portia's going to be trying to get that bag regardless, okay? And that's what's going to 
you got that baby, it's going to be something that connects them. But, um, yeah. Ah, so, going through the different scenes uh, real quickly. Because, like I said, it, it is a hot mess. It's, this show is just for, not ratings, really. Uh, or ratings to get her another segment to this show, maybe season two. I don't think it should be played into that. I think Portia needs to keep her immediate family and her family at large off camera because they're going to do more damage and he's doing more damage than making her look good. Because uh, Lauren, which is the girl at the right, way to the right, and then this uh, Dar I don't know, I her name is Darlene. That's uh, uh, her sister, uh, Diane. She got so much to say to both Dennis and Simon, but Diane ain't got nothing to say. Even got grandmama up there putting her two cents in. Talking about Dennis is a player. Because uh, she has a son that loves them women's too. And how are you going to say that with Dennis' mama sitting at the other end of the table? She ain't going to let you disrespect her. She ain't going to let you do it. And of course, she jumped into uh, grandmama's ass a little bit, which I think she shouldn't have. You know, you step to the plate, you want to make a swing, you got to get past my fastball. And if you don't, I'm going to be talking shit. And that's pretty much what you're going to say. Like, hey, it may be a clan, but Williams is here. And guess what? I came as a plus one with this uh, to this barbecue birthday party of Porsche because she said my son couldn't bring me a date. Now, when something ends up to a certain degree, because how they ended up, you already know. Portia just don't want nobody to be that's it. In case this shit don't work out with Simon, she's going to fly right back to his time. And she's going to claim, oh, my daughter needs her family. Oh, this, that. And I'm like, no, Portia, you running out for that money. And by putting your whole family on this segment, all of them look pretty thirsty to me. Especially that one lady, I think it was a friend of your mama. She just had too much to say. And I was waiting for somebody to shut her shit. But nobody did. Nobody did. Okay, well, we're going into the scene. We had a scene where uh, Lauren and Portia meet up at, uh, for lunch after discussing things, you know, uh, the little Mother's Day gym that was given and why uh, Lauren is going around here meeting with Dennis and what is Dennis actually telling her and what is she actually telling Dennis. And it was just like Lauren was being the middle man, the middle person. And she really shouldn't put herself in a situation like that. But Lauren uh, is not her assistant anymore. Lauren calls herself doing what she needs to do. She made it very clear that her and Portia are business partners. They're 50 50 ownership in this goat naked hair line that they have. And now Lawrence is trying to be a little spiritual guru out there. And my old mom. Oh my goodness. So, you know, somehow we got on Lauren personal business. And evidently, she don't got into another bad relationship, and she just want to find happiness with some guy. She can't seem to find it. And I'm like, girl, get in a line, get in a line, because there's a lot of people out here sucking themselves. I ain't crying about nothing and nobody, because I feel when it's time, the Lord will bless me, and if the Lord feel like He don't want to bless me with another date, it's so easy. We ain't gonna be shedding no tears on no loss subjects such as, ooh, I need a man and I want to be with a man with that third. Now, get with yourself, be comfortable with yourself and the rest of the home. You will probably be sitting up there minding your business, doing your thing, and Mr. Right will come knocking at your door. That's what I'm saying. Okay, or wherever you at, the Lord will make a way for that person to meet you where you at at that time in your life and will bless you. Okay? So, don't always look like it's going to happen in one, two, three. Or act like it's going to happen in 10, 15, 20 years. We don't know, okay? It just is what it is. Keep up the vibe, Miss Lauren. But uh, she just bust out, started crying. Of course, she even told her, you know, I don't think that boy you would be the one that you're dating now. I don't think I don't think he's a good fit. I'm like, really, poor kid, tell like that? Okay, now, can you sell some truth when somebody's throwing a goblet right back at you? Okay, can you sell some truth? Because me. Dina was serving you up at that lunch where she about to tear in your ass. Well, she really did, but <laughs> you felt her raving you back in the room. I'm like, you should. You ain't have no business trying to come out. I'm taking over my grandmama because I need you to chat. What you going to do? You going to jump? 
Like Sheree said, if we go check with him, you gonna jump and hit Dennis Ron? Y'all gonna get in a cat fight? And you know, Jeannie would have slung your head all the way around that, uh, that uh, restaurant girl. And then picked up the pizza, picked up your phone or her phone and called you and said, come get me out of jail because I know what you're gonna put me. <laughs> but this is what happened. Oh, Lord. It kind of reminds me of Mama Joyce Todd and Todd's mother when she was living, getting into it. Child, child, child. But anyway, moving on from there. Uh, but Portia did tell, uh, no, about Portia. Lauren did tell Portia that she did invite um her ex-boyfriend, her baby daddy, to the nuptials, or not nuptials, but barbecue celebrating, still celebrating her birthday. Okay. And um, she was like, why did you do that? And she's like, you, you know, hey, you got to have a clear playing field here. You can't pick and choose how you want everybody to be in a little box that you don't compart that you have compartmentalized them in your brain. That's not how people work. That's not how the real world is. And, and I want him to come because he's family. So I'm like, okay, do what you got to do because it don't seem like nobody's going to sign the corner, but we're going to get these fine. Okay, then we got... um. Oh, she, uh, Portia was asking Lauren, did she actually check Dennis on why he put his post? He made a comment under her post when showing her and this nice little green olive suit she had on her, her, her dress. And I'm like, a man's going to be a man, Portia, okay? You didn't mind. You did not mind at all that uh, that, that dude got up under yo, uh, what do you call it? got up under your post and said you look good. Remember, like to always be saying they look good to their exes, to their current, and maybe their future. They like to look good. Portia like to look good, okay? Showing too much of her assets, but this is the world she lives in right now, okay? So, there was no harm done, not in my eyes. It's just, you know, banter, uh, cute banter. So, I'm like, you can't be playing in the field and don't expect Somebody to come pluck something out your pretty field because this is how it happens for it. when you're playing both sides. And um, let's see, Dennis talked about social media. Dennis talks about social media. Oh, yeah, Dennis was complaining that social media had picked him apart on him commenting on their um, Portia's Instagram account when she was wearing a nice outfit and you know, he said he was just playing. He was like, we know, Dennis, you, you, you know, you just do shit like that. You don't really think about the consequences to after the fact. But one thing has been definitely true of you being shown on Real Housewives of Atlanta, as well as the second time on Portia's new show, that you do love her. You do care about her. Um, and you do want her still, but you want her to sign that prenup. I know you ain't going to say it on TV, but I'm going to say it for you. As quiet as you're trying to keep it, I'm going to say it out loud. Wash your signs that free month. You would definitely be up there planning a wedding. Uh, you know, more than likely you would like to uh, work with him and spend no money like that. But, hey, you'll go on and you'll give Portia pretty much a itinerary of how much you can spend. And, you know, between you and your mama, y'all will make it that she ain't going to have all of that. But you don't have your own pocket, which Portia should. Okay, if she wants to have such an extravagant wedding of sorts. She needs to put some of that bill. Uh, going back to the toy store, <laughs> and Dennis was talking kind of crazy outside his neck, and Mama Gina checked him, saying, you know, you added to some of that fueling of what was being displayed on social media, and you shouldn't have been up there. But I know you thirsty. You hear it like it's shit. But remember what Mama told you. Uh, make sure your I's are dotted, your T's are crossed. This is a contractual agreement, and Mama ain't gonna get hit by no uh, side, uh, be blindsided because Portia want to come and say I'm through with you, but I'm gonna get my money. You know she ain't gonna be ass out. So I can understand Mama drilling that in your head and Portia head. That ain't nothing gonna happen between them as far as marital. Uh, reconciliations, getting married or whatnot, ring being given back unless a prenup is signed. Okay, in a big, pretty bowl and, and uh, let me see, give me, give me my copy so I don't feel like I'm going to be taken for a ride. 
that I didn't have to go on in the first place. Um, I already talked about PJ. Uh, uh, so then we go into uh, for, of course, you're getting ready for a birthday. I don't understand when people celebrate their whole birthday for a whole week. I'm like, damn, you only came in the world one time. Okay, that's the only time you need to be celebrating. That's just my feel for but this party up, turn up for a whole week or a whole month. That's too much. Too much. But for those who want to spend their money, go ahead, do your thing. It's your day. But um, Simon comes over, bearing gifts, okay? And he's not dressed to impress at all, but. Yeah, we do we expect him to? Do we really expect him to? Because of course, don't put her signature stamp on it. It ain't gonna happen. It just ain't gonna happen. Okay, it just ain't gonna happen. He ain't gonna act right because he don't know how to act right. Don't know how to dress. Don't know how to talk. Not a very inviting type man that you even want to have a conversation with. Okay, he's just not having a conversation with Jen. Not being able to talk to Jen. So I'm like, man, please. What world do you reside? Because literally, it's like nobody want to be bothered to Simon because you run the doorbell out there at your fiance's house trying to get in. Party going on in the other room. People walking around. The film crew is seeing you stand outside the double doors. Can't get in. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Okay, ain't nobody paying you no attention. But keep a knocking, but we're not letting you in. Yes, honey. Yeah, please. Sam, just not. Just not. I'm like, <laughs> how long y'all gonna play this scene up? Evidently, ain't nobody coming to let Simon. Okay, Papa Smurf in. Not Grandpa. We ain't let him in. We getting turned up. We could get less keys out there. But anyway, he finally get an epiphany, and he opens up the store. Oh, Lord. He opens up the door and get his own self in. Okay? And then he comes in the room, trying to talk to everybody. Everybody looking at him like he had crazy. And, you know, he feels, he said he feels a warm welcome. I said, damn, feel like a cold shower to me when you walked in the room, brother. Seems like they threw you in a cold shower. And they were like putting you to the side until they felt like they wanted to deal with you if you wasn't really needed at that time. Okay, of course, they ain't come down. They were trying to get their own groove on. But anyway, he goes around and he tries to be, play nice, do the nicety game. And ain't nobody checking for time. Ain't nobody checking for time. So, I mean, if you thought you were lost in the sauce and lost in the crowd, even though you were around most people, that, that was the pretty poor reception that they gave you, Simon. So that should tell you, they ain't feeling you either, baby girl or baby boy. They ain't feeling you. Um, then Lauren goes up to see um, Portia while she's trying to get dressed and trying, trying to correlate her outfits with her fiancé, Simon. Uh, Lauren tells her, you know, I got your gift. I got your gift. Uh, it's not materialistic. It's more spirituality. Set you up with my shaman, my guru, this, that, third. And of course, your first off said, what you do that for? I don't want no gift like that. Then she kind of thought about it. I probably got a epiphany that she was being filmed. And she probably said, oh, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, let me, you know, let me, <laughs> let me go back and retract it. Oh, I like your gift. That's a good, that's a well thought out gift. Thank you. I'm like, you said it right. You didn't want it. You wanted something materialistic. And you're trying to seek it, figure out why your sister was holding out on you. Okay. But it just is what it is. Then we got some lady that I come to find out. I think her name is Arlene or something to that effect. She was in a red dress. I'm supposed to be a family friend of Diane. Oh, she talked to me. Whether they do, she's just there for uh, commercial time or TV time. And she wants to be seen probably on all these this season. But I'm like, sit, know your place, okay? If Diane ain't going to come out and check sign up or check her own daughter, don't need you to be picking up the pieces trying to check. Anybody, okay? This is piss poor. I'm like Diane, get your friend. But yet, you get into the game instead of letting all these other folks get in the game, making their impressions on your door and her comings and going with her new man, girl. But anyway, yeah, I'm too fit to be tied with red dress. Um, uh, think her name is Esther. Didn't like, didn't care for. Felt she was doing too much. Then we have Lundy and Lauren. 
So they're talking about Dennis, because Wanda just asked her, you know, I know you met with Dennis, I lead out of law, what happened? And, you know, she was here for it for the moment, but then Lauren had said, you know, I invited Dennis to the barbecue, and I told him, he could bring somebody. So uh, Lodi was like, girl, you just being messy, you just being messy. I'm like, Lodi, to me, she wants her time, too, in front of the camera. But I'm like, mm -mm, the camera just don't love you, Lodi, it just don't love you, okay? We can barely put up with Lauren. Lauren's been around for a long time, and she makes good sense sometimes when she's trying to check her older sister. Okay, uh, she's the voice of reason when it comes to court. But moving on from there, we got Aunt Darlene gets into interrogate mode with Tanya. That's Diane's sister. Okay, y'all seen her when we had these little three ladies at a table. Lauren was sitting at the far right, and then you had one lady that was sitting at the far left. That was Diane's sister. Um. Uh, Darlene, okay, and Darlene was trying to call herself checking in on Simon to see how she's gonna he's gonna be treated with these. I'm like, okay, that's another visit by the family member. We didn't see you in season 12 or 13 trying to check Dennis and trying to get into those draws. We don't need you over here trying to do anything. We want Diane to stand up and show and prove us to us what has she made in a daughter before. And what this portion really stand for. I don't even think Diane knows who she is. I really don't. Okay. Because so she's sitting up there letting her daughter portion be as confused as she are. And and it may have a possibility of dripping down to her granddaughter. You no, know, like I said, Diane you look quite bad. Okay. And I'm already having many, many fights with her. And I'm winning every last one of them. Okay. In my mind, fighting the portion's mom. All right, I'm just saying. Uh we have a battle of words right now. Cause she's pretty much wanting me to pull that stone hair hug and, and drag her all the way around her house, okay? But having her daughter out here looking like a damn fool, okay? Then, you know, we have the situation with Portia. It's outside, you know, the family's gathering around. You know, they telling lies, she telling lies. This ain't nothing but a lie party, okay? And Portia's telling her family members. Uh, she's going to be wife number four. And of course, that's what we have. Our so-called Jose Williams daughter up in there looking all disgusted and saying, um, that's Darlene, the one I was just finished talking about, the one up to the further left, look, looking just like her uh, mama and her sister. That's that storm hair from, um, I think it's Avengers or something, or Halle Berry hair page storm. Y'all know what I'm talking about in that little cartoon animated um, based, I don't know where it comes from, it's a superhero movie, and she plays, uh, Storm in there, but, yeah, I, I wasn't feeling it, I wasn't feeling it, because, you know, but Diane is paying both sides, too, you know, well, I like Dennis, and I like Simon, I said, for one, you don't know Simon to like him that much, you could have said you're trying to get familiar with Simon, that would have been a better word, and you could have said, I know Dennis, I know his bad thoughts, his flaws, I know his good things, and that's, he loves his kid, and he did it, but not do it. Okay, now that's how I would have put it. But like I said, Diane is there for a check. I know Portia is there for a check. The sign and co-sign up for a push. Um, let me see here. Okay, we got um Dennis. Uh, you know she she have a small talk with Portia. He invited her out to dinner, and of course dinner uh from Portia eyes was seeming like she was just going in as PJ parent and they were going to have a progress meeting about how their daughter is faring with him, uh, with her having to have to go stay with him, you know, in his house, and then she had to come back home and stay with her, and daddy's not there. And how has that been affecting uh, PJ? Like, we ain't got time to hear about PJ's small problems or where she lay her head. We just know God got her. That's all we need to know, and we don't need to know nothing else about what the parents are doing to try to make it feel better for themselves. Cause they ain't got shit to do with people. Okay, so they're gonna be real regardless. All right, even if the grandparents have to get involved and raise her. All right, that's all I'm just saying. But anyway, um, you know, Dennis was talking to her about, you know, I know you ain't thinking about leaving Duluth, cause you know he had heard of some things, uh, you know, in passing probably through Lauren. That she was trying to move with this, that, and third. And, um, 
they were trying to get the timeline straight because Dennis was saying, you know, you just, you don't move too fast with this man. I'm concerned about it. I know you love me. I still love you too. And I don't think it's over. And you just threw Portia for a loop. Like, of course, you knew what you were stepping into. We knew that man was still liking you. We know you were still liking man. And you just trying to play Simon like um Papa Smurf. Okay? And because the whole little uh, barbecue the thing that y'all had. What about a really can about Simon? They really would. They had turned it into the Dennis and Portia show with Mama Gina having to have to get in some asses uh, and set some things straight and don't put no salt on her name and her, her child. That's what she was trying to say. And Portia was not really not saying anything because definitely Portia should check her grandma and say, Mama, grandma, you want to be too far now. Uh, now, I like it when she's told Simon that uh, uh, he said something about you run through women. <laughs> I said, now nah, you got a whole house and your granddaughter's part of that whole house, okay? You been looking for out real good, okay, girl? So what did you teach your granddaughter growing up? What did your daughter teach her daughter growing up? Because the apple is far falling from that tree, okay? So that goes all the way back to you, Grandma. What was you doing in your heyday that made your daughter turn out to have a daughter turn out like Portia and be thirsty for men to take care of her. That's why we're in this situation now. So let's go back. Let's go with that win. Okay? Woo! I couldn't have known you. You couldn't have been too much more than 10. All right, I don't know what's wrong with Grandma, but I know something wrong with her daughter. You know, that looking like um, a Jezebel spirit, too. And then uh, you already know that's a Jezebel spirit because, hey, Portia's a Jezebel spirit. They need to get their shit together. Okay, that's probably why she didn't keep up with Jose's William son. All right, but they don't know tell us that. We want to know, Pastor, what was the background on Miss Diane and your dad not staying together? What came? What, what was the problem? Somebody cheating? I want to know. Inquiring minds over here want to know. But anyway, going back to the article or the, the show. Um, they were fussing about their timelines and when they actually broke up. You know, Dennis was like, you know, all upset with Portia because she wasn't making no sense. She wasn't telling the truth. And he was like, you still love me. It's still what it is. Man, we're going to keep moving. Are you ready to go? <laughs> because he was tired. He, was, he didn't want to take no more. He was tired of Portia's shit, of lying and carrying on. And that's why he didn't get the ring. That's why she didn't get the ring. Because he was like, oh, so you don't mean she's going, yeah, we were old. We were done with it. You didn't bring that ring. You know, it's almost like... Or she has stipulations. You know what I'm saying? Like she's trying to run something. Like you didn't run Cordell. You damn sure ain't gonna run Simon. You're giving us all a headache. Your best match is to stay with Dennis. Because he listens to your stuff. He can still go do what he want to do. But then he shower you with gifts. <laughs> and I'm like, you sitting up there talking about you want to marry Simon. He already telling you they can have side bits. Yes, they can have side bits. So I'm like, anybody want to be Simon's side bitch? Just know he calling you a bitch. He don't respect you. I like say he love you, he might give you different presents of uh, good quality money or whatnot. May take you on, you know, airplane trips and, and, and destination trips or exotic places or whatnot. But you wouldn't be his side bitch. That's how you think of you. Not as a person, not as an individual, not as somebody he loves to spend his time with. He just likes to call you a bitch. So anybody want to go with Simon with that type of repertoire, go ahead. Because he only sees you, like I said, as an itch. Uh, then we got, um, let me see. Oh, uh, I, see, I don't know what I said. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Dennis, he's very comical. They go and leave the restaurant. Portia, I don't know what happened with Jimmy. I don't tell me what happened to Portia's Rose Royce that she got from some African man. I ain't talking about Simon. It was somebody that, um, Kenya was fussing with her about. But anyway, she, we don't see the Rose Royce. I mean, yeah, the Rose Royce anymore. I don't see her uh, road, Range Rover she was driving. I mean, maybe they all at home, but I'm not sure. And uh, she was driving a Mercedes this time. I forgot what class it was. But it was nice. And uh, Dennis told me he came in an Uber. <laughs> so, you know, that man going to always pay out some money, okay? I got time for this mess. I don't pay probably $100 for our lunch slash dinner we had. And you ain't giving up no butt. And you ain't you trying to give me all the blues and shit. And talking to you in love with this man. You just said you was in love with me. You don't know what you're talking about, girl. So he, he can take that spade of a woman in uh, Portia. But Portia can't accept her truth. And uh, he said, uh huh, I'm waiting on the Uber. But I'll walk you to your car. He opened it up for us, let her get in. And then that helped her leave and call him Simon. Kind of 
Yeah, I just met with Dennis, and yeah, we this, this. And I'm like, girl, you ain't talking to him like you're a shrink. This is your man you're supposed to have, but at the table, you were telling Lauren that he was your man, meaning Dennis. So I'm confused, girl. I'm confused. You can't go forward when you're still dwelling in your past portion, but your mama should have told you that. But anyway, um, let me see. Then Lauren has um, Portia come to some shaman, some spiritual person. And I'm mad at Jose Williams' uh, daughter. She's up there calling herself bringing, telling Lauren she's going to bring her violence and crystals. Like, girl, are you missing in the mystique world too? The mystical world? And she's sitting up here on the latest calling or conjuring up something. And she was like, well, uh, I, I don't know what we're doing here. What spirits you calling? But I feel a draft or something. I said, you should have been drafting your ass up from out of there, which you should have been done. Because if you're a solid Christian, you know, for a fact, we don't deal in conjuring. We don't uh, we don't agree with contacting no uh, past spirits. We, we don't call on no answers. We even do none of that, okay? We're just going to keep it 100 and say, you know, we believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the blood of Jesus. And if I got to take through this, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to get the hell out of you. I'm going to walk up, walk out, and, and keep it moving. She didn't do that. She sitting up there being, you know, making fun of somebody else's religion or culture and stuff of that nature. Trying to go tip for that. I'm like, you know, if I was on the opposite end of the spectrum and somebody came in and disrespected my culture like that, I probably wouldn't have said that to her either. I wouldn't even just, I, I like, let's just not do this, okay? You're not going to disrespect me. I don't disrespect what you feel. It's like, I, I saw another side of Elizabeth. I'm like, girl, well, the whole honor of God when you're around people like that. But better yet, don't go around people like that. You knew about this setup prior to it being taped. And you're going to sit up there and do what you did. I lost respect for Elizabeth, okay? So I'm going to be watching her with a side eye myself. Uh, you know, she started praying and singing and stuff like we have in church. Home down, acapella style church going on in the backyard of this lady that calls herself a shaman. And she beating up on drums and calling ancestors and, and whatever. And Elizabeth saying she comes with up demons and all this kind of stuff. But yeah, you sitting up there being filmed. You sitting up there partaking of all of this. And then you're going to call up your spirits or your God. I'm like, nah, I'll see. You're doing a little bit too much for me. So um, I call foul on Miss Elizabeth Williams or whatever her other name is, a married name. But I was disappointed at her trying to show somebody else's religion. If you don't believe in it, don't go around it, don't participate in it. Don't have nothing to say about it, okay? They say something I don't do, that's something you do that's good, love it for you. But I'm just going to take exit stage right or stage left and get the hell out of here. Because this is not something I signed up for. And that's how we would have did that. But she wanted to be rude and just that and the third and try to challenge somebody. And, you know, I just thought that was totally, totally wrong, okay? Um, let's see. Let's see something. Do, do, do. And then somebody had so, something that disturbed me also when Simon caught himself saying that he was actually disturbed or he was basically a rescue of course and uh, his other wives. So I was like, what, what are, you, are you looking for damaged women or something? Simon? Those are the ones you're going for. So you can actually get off of them too while they're, you know, being, you know, uh, under the influence of something else being detrimental to them and they can't really function uh, at 100%. That's how you go in and get these damaged women to get do whatever you want them to do. And then when you've gotten what you want, you just leave and they'll leave them more damaged than they were when you first came into their life. Is that what you're saying, Simon? Like, okay. Okay. Then grandma was saying something to Simon about, we just sharing now when they was at the barbecue. Uh, we, we don't mind sharing PJ with both men, meaning, you know, they'd be important in her life, meaning Simon and Dennis, but we ain't sharing pork. Like, grandma, if you don't sit your ass down, see, that's what I'm saying. You can't invite parents of a child, and then two blended families, they got, you know, a lot to say, and they both can be filed on both sides. That ain't, that ain't, it just shows a bad play of, you know, black families. I don't like that. Barbara Show made it 
be the worst thing that they could edit showing us being a certain way. Oh, uh, I, I like it. I didn't like it. Um, and that was pretty much it, to tell you the truth. Um, uh, other than Gina and Portia, meaning Dennis' mom and Portia getting into it at a luncheon that she had invited Dennis' mama to, mainly to pretty much get her straight. Like, I didn't like how you was treating my grandmama and the tone that you had with her. I don't want you to have that tone with her. And I'm like, Portia, check yourself. Okay? Check yourself for your records. Because Dennis' mama drag you all over that, uh, that, uh, luncheon that uh, y'all partake of at restaurant. And then, uh, she, she, she seems like she a pop in hands, okay? So, why are you doing all of that bad mouth and talking or whatever? But Miss Gina, she was checking you just like y'all was playing chess. You sitting over there playing chess, okay? And she she just wasn't feeling you for so she She know you. She know the kind of woman you are. She dealt with them in the past. And, hey, she might have dealt with it in her lifetime. Uh, with Dennis' dad, you know. But it just is what it is. You know, she called the space, space. She said, your grandma was trying to say my son was bad because he cheated. This damn third hell, you cheated. They ain't bring that up. And then she was trying to say, oh, I got this information from your mama. Okay, she said, my mama ain't told you. And they're like, yeah, yeah, mama Diane probably been running her mouth and probably took it out of context. But your mama did probably tell her more than likely that you were seeing somebody while you were seeing Dennis. But, you know, you had broke it off, but it still gave that uh, or lined up with that idea that you were seeing somebody else and seeing her son at the same time. So she didn't correct you. Got your apology from you, and then try to say, I can try to move on with you, but I'm gonna check you every time you get step out of line. It's gonna be a check, okay? I'm gonna have to chin check you. So, it, it, it was, uh, it's like I said, it's gonna have a hot mess, hot mess, it's not showing Portia in any uh, good light at all. Um, and it, it's, it's just a mess. It's, it, this is what Portia has uh, put herself into. She's gonna get that money no matter what, she don't care what people think about her, how they think about her, when they think about her. She just feels that the drop in the bucket that Bravo gave her to make this um uh, season of uh, showmanship of how you can be played to be made out to be a fool on uh, live TV. And this is the way to go. Okay, so if you like your money, like the lies and you see uh the disrespect, this is the way you should go. But they showed it not show Portia in a positive light. Not even in episode one. This is episode two, and we still are going down the hill. We still are going south on this show. Okay, but that's all I had, guys. It was kind of long, but you know, some things that disturbed me, and I had to put them in this video. But if you like it, I can't be long winded, I'm sorry, but I can give you definitely some good entertainment parts. Okay, I can kick in and chuckle myself at times, but it is here what it is. Like a love, you gotta have me. Have more of my videos. Don't forget to subscribe. Uh, share and like my videos, and I will see y'all next time. Bye-bye.